everyone. Welcome back to another Victober video. And I have a very special one for you today. And that is a collaborative video with a lovely, fabulous group of booktubers and bookstagrammers. There are just some really lovely, special, thoughtful, observant people in this group. And so I am really looking forward to you seeing this. In case you don't know what Bookstagram is, that is the bookish corner of Instagram. And there are some amazing accounts where people share really beautiful pictures of books with really thoughtful reviews. And I thought it would be fun to ask these people who are also lovers of Victorian literature about a Victorian novel that surprised them. I got the idea for this when there was a Victorian novel that surprised me this summer, and that was Dracula by Bram Stoker. I did put this on my five-star TBR last year, uh, Victober, when I did my five-star TBR predictions list, but I kind of did it in good faith. And as it got closer to reading it, I got more and more nervous about reading Dracula. Was it going to be boring? Was I not going to like any of the characters? Was it just going to be kind of grotesque? And I am really happy to say it is now one of my absolute favorite Victorian novels. I did have to push through. I started out reading this with an audiobook and I did most of it in audiobook format. I did have to push through, like I said, for the very first couple of hours. I really wasn't feeling it, but then it just was very timely that I had seen my dad and he had spoken about how much he loved the book Dracula and I continued on and I'm so glad that I did. Once I pushed through those first couple hours, I became so engaged with the book and so um, motivated to keep reading and finding out what was going to happen. I know that sometimes Mina Harker can be critiqued as being really one dimensional and the novel described as sexist, but in this setting, it really did not bother me. In this book, these characters, including Mina Harker and the men that she knows are fighting for their lives and really fighting to save Mina. And so kind of the characterization can take a bit of a backseat because I was just really wanting these people to live and to defeat Count Dracula. And I had no idea what was going to happen next. I was on the edge of my seat. Something in the way that Bram Stoker told this story, he just told it so well and had me guessing until the end. And it was a really satisfying reading experience. So without further ado, you will now hear from some other people, some other readers on Victorian novels that have surprised them. My biggest Victorian surprise read was without a doubt, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte which I read last year in Victoba. And I don't know why I went into this book with such low expectations, but I think it's partly this idea I had that Anne was maybe the slightly less revolutionary, slightly less significant, maybe even slightly less talented of the Bronte sisters. And also because just based on the title, I imagined that this was some sort of dark dreary tale of some guy living in the countryside. So imagine my surprise when it turns out that the tenant is actually a lady and that her story is one of the most modern, most dramatic, most heartfelt and most well-written Victorian novels I have ever read. Hi folks, I'm Juliana and the best Victorian book I read this year so far is Hester by Scottish author Margaret Oliphant published in 1883. Here we have two stories of two strong female characters who in a way mirror each other. We have the coming of age story of a young woman, the Hester in the title, and we have the story of an old spinster, Catherine Vernon, a somewhat distant relative of Hester, who assumes a leading role as a businesswoman. Despite their similar personalities, Hester and Catherine are constantly misunderstanding each other and their relationship is marked by this tension. What I loved so much about this novel was its ironic take on love and its way of shifting the perspective traditionally adopted in a marriage plot so that it mocks the conventions of this genre. The moral dilemmas Hester and Catherine are faced with are not centered on men or marriage but on their relationships with other women. In Hester in particular, we have a female character who knows she could do more than that which the society she lives in allows her to do. So in a way, Margaret Oliphant is trying to do something very transgressive here, while at the same time trying not to be too shocking for her reader, so that she's always covering with a layer of satire and irony her efforts to transgress. So yeah, 
This was a pleasure to read and I highly recommend it. Happy Victober, everyone! Hi all! Um, my name is Elisa or Eliza as you pronounce it in English and Kate asked me to present a Victorian book that has wowed me and I will do so but I will do it in my native tongue which is Portuguese de Portugal uh, e o livro que eu mais adorei vitoriano é este A Feira das Vaidades ou Vanity Fair do William Makepeace Thackeray foi um dos primeiros um, clássicos que alguma vez li tem traição tem engano tem a história de duas amigas de origens muito diferentes um, e vai contar a história delas desde um, o início, que é quando deixam a sua escola, pronto, uma escola de formação para meninas, antes das guerras napoleónicas, uh, até aos seus 40 e tais anos. Portanto, vai acompanhar durante muito tempo. Uh, temos cenas em Bruxelas, inclusive no baile da Duquesa de Richmond, que é um momento icónico antes da, da Batalha de Waterloo. Aqui uh, discute-se muito o viver das aparências, uh, o ser e o parecer, um, discute-se oportunistas e este livro tem só a minha personagem ficcional preferida, que é a Rebecca Sharp. Estão a ver a minha gata. Um, portanto, eu aconselho vivamente, é grandinho, Sim, esta é uma edição em inglês, eu li em inglês e aconselho. So, this is it for now and I hope you have enjoyed it and I will see you soon again next time. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Kate from The Novel Nomad and the Victorian novel that surprised me most over my two years of doing it Victober definitely was The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. This is actually a collection of short fiction written in the late Victorian period, so you're thinking about 1890s. And what I love about this book, it is that it is so strongly feminist and you can kind of see where that suffragette, that movement has this ground staring coming from. But it's also looking into those early stages of psychology as well. And also female madness and how the female view and the female gaze was very much restricted within the Victorian society and how that cage was trying to be broken out of. And like many late Victorian tales, it has a fabulous twist. So if you're looking for something to read this Victober, I highly recommend The Yellow Wallpaper. Hello, I'm Katie from Books and Things, and one Victorian book that definitely surprised me is Olive by De Anna Mullet Craig. This is one of my favourite Victorian books, and it's one that I picked up without knowing very much about it at all, but it really wowed me and blew me off my feet. It is such an incredible book. This tells the story of Olive um, from her childhood into her adulthood. She, as a young girl, is born with a physical deformity um, that means her spine is misshapen and she doesn't look like the other girls and later women around her. She's sort of told by the people around her that she's never going to get married she's never going to have children, she's never going to have the life that typical Victorian women have and so she goes and does something different with her life and the book explores her kind of growing into the belief that she deserves happiness as well as the relationship that she has with all of the people around her. I would say that if you like Jane Eyre, Olive is definitely a book that is worth reading. It is such an incredible and powerful book, so moving and so wonderful and definitely an absolute favourite, a book that really surprised me, um, that really exceeded my expectations and that I would highly, highly recommend. Hi everyone, I'm Marissa from Blatantly Bookish. A Victorian novel that surprised me was The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I've read this book multiple times at this point, the first time in high school, the second time in college, and honestly, I'm due for a reread. I love how Stevenson explores themes of duality of man and the concept that even under the facade of the respectable Victorian gentleman can lurk unseemly secrets and unspeakable horrors. But the first time I read this book, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that many people regard Jekyll and Hyde as an important precursor to science fiction, which is a genre I don't usually enjoy, so I was skeptical right away. I was familiar with the phrase Jekyll and Hyde, but was unaware of the detailed plot of the book. 
Even people who are unfamiliar with the story do tend to know the phrase Jekyll and Hyde to refer to a person who has a dual personality, who is rather unpredictable, and who you never know when interacting with them if you'll suddenly get on their bad side. But I'm still surprised by how much depth there is to this short Victorian novel and how enjoyable it is to read, even though most modern day readers will be already familiar with aspects of the plot. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde will always hold a special place in my heart as probably the first book that I ever seriously studied and analyzed. Thank you so much to Kate for including me in this collaboration, and thank you to all of the lovely Victober ladies for hosting this spectacular readathon. Megan Hannett here. Thank you so much, Kate, for having me on your channel. So, a Victorian novel that surprised me that I didn't expect would become a new favorite. That is Mary Barton by Elizabeth. Gaskell. I love this book. It is suspenseful. It is exciting. The characters are great. Now this was her first novel. When it came out she got a lot of criticism because she was exploring the whole battle in Manchester between the masters and the workers. Sound familiar? That is because she wrote about that in North and South. But in North and South she wrote about it from, she tried to write it from an equal perspective of masters and workers. Whereas in Mary Barton this is solely from the mass, or sorry, from the workers perspective. There's also something really exciting that happens halfway through and it takes you in a whole new direction. So yes, go read Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. Hi, I'm Olive from the booktube channel A Book Olive, and a Victorian novel that surprised me and knocked my socks off was Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. By the time I picked up my first Gaskell book, which was Wives and Daughters, I was already well on my way to falling in love with Victorian literature. But I think when I picked up Wives and Daughters, it surprised me so much just how relatable it was. It has seemed to me more and more over the years that more people would like to get into the classics, but a lot of people find them intimidating. I think this is especially true for young people. They think that a book written back in the Victorian era wouldn't possibly have something that would be relatable to them within the pages. Wives and Daughters completely shattered that notion in my mind and I think would have the same effect on other people if they gave it a try. Wives and Daughters showcases a blended family situation, which I know a lot of people in the modern day are familiar with, including myself. And it also has a wonderful female friendship between these two stepsisters, the type of female friendship that I see particularly YA readers yearn for. And the heroine of the novel, Molly Gibson, has become one of my favorite characters in all of literature. She is a never-ending well of kindness, and I think we could all learn a thing or two from her. Wives and Daughters taught me that a Victorian novel doesn't have to be something lofty or unrelatable. It can be something infinitely approachable and land right on your doorstep. Hi, I'm Petra Yu and the Victorian book that surprised me is The Old Woman by George Kissing. You wouldn't think that a book written in 19th century by a male author could be feminist, but The Old Woman indeed is. Uh, the Old Woman is about women uh, that want to stay unmarried in a society that expects women to be willing to marry and carry children and all of the female characters in this book are so multi-layered and flawed and I really enjoyed how uh, in a contrast uh, the male characters feel a little bit one-sided and they more symbolize the male attitudes towards women in Victorian era and I definitely, definitely recommend this if you like multi-layered, strong female characters and feminist undertones. Hi Kate. The Victorian novel that really surprised me, I just read this year and it was a recommendation to me by you. And that novel is Esther Waters by George Moore. And this novel follows the fallen woman trope but it is not completely bleak and hopeless, which is what I was worried about whenever I first started to read it. It does have heartbreaking moments, and I mean, a lot of heartbreaking moments. She goes through some really hard things, but at the same time, there is so much hope and just resilience by Esther and by the people who love her and want to see her succeed. 
And that to me was different from what I would expect from a Victorian novel following that trope. So yeah, that is my pick for a Victorian novel that has surprised me. A Victorian book that really surprised me and quickly became one of my favorites is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. Agnes Grey is a book about a woman named Agnes Grey who is from a middle class family. Except her family falls into some financial hard times and she then takes a job as a governess to help her family out. Because she's from a middle class family, she has a hard time adjusting to being a governess. She is treated very poorly by the people she works for, the children are terrible to her, and because she is not considered a servant of the house, the servants shun her and then she's also shunned by the upper class family that she is a governess for. So she is very, very lonely and very much by herself. Charlotte Bronte is quoted as saying that this is Anne Bronte's autobiography and Anne Bronte was a governess at some point in her life. It is very much a broad look at how the different classes treated each other during the Victorian time. And I really enjoyed this book because it's very short, so if you're somebody who has not read very many classics or you're just unsure about the classic genre in general, this one would not take up much of your time. And Anne Bronte has such a beautiful writing style, it's very easy to understand. So that's why I highly recommend this book to anybody. Hi there, I'm Amanda Jenner and I've got a YouTube channel. Um, and I just wanted to tell you about uh, my favorite Victorian novel and probably one of my favorites of all time and that's Far From The Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Um, this book really surprised me. After reading Tess of the D'Urbervilles back when I was in school, I was expecting um, Far From The Madding Crowd to be really depressing and full of tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. But it actually isn't. Um, it's a really uplifting novel, um, but it's full of imperfect characters. It's got one of my favourite female characters of all time, Bathsheba Everdeen. Uh, she's so imperfect and she's so uh, ahead of her time. It's about her inheriting a farm and then um, learning how to run it by herself and bringing on the help that she needs. And she's so forthright um, and stubborn and she uh, doesn't have the best path to finding happiness. Um, but yeah it is it is just fantastic um the one of the main characters um G gabriel oak he's just so dreamy and i think you know i don't really get crushes on people in books but he is he is up there he's my mr darcy um he's just um a really well-rounded patient strong humble um guy and i just i just really think he's a well-crafted character and this book touches on issues um that i think were also unexpected and surprising for the day there's issues of mental health there's definitely feminism twists in here there's definitely issues to do with um not following the social expectations of relationships and 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 love and 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 what you do if you don't conform um anyway that is all I'm going to say, if you haven't read it already, read it, and it's a perfect book to read during Victober. Hello, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. I'm here to tell you about a Victorian novel that surprised me. An 1853 novel by Charlotte Mary Young called The Heir of Redcliffe. I found out about Young because she was one of my favourite writers, favourite writers. Barbara Pym is that writer. The link between me and Charlotte. And this novel is about a rich orphan who is adopted into his poorer cousin's family at the age of 17 despite a centuries-long feud between the branches of the family he's fascinating and a delightful character and the novel explores through extremely well-drawn characters what it means to be a good person but what captivated my heart even more than all that was that one of his younger cousins 16 or 17 year old boy Charles Edmonston was disabled, and the way that his character was so larger than life, he should have been the main character, because that's how fully drawn he was. He was impudent, brash, and he grew and changed through the novel. But everybody's attitude towards him and his disability and his attitude towards it certainly enlightened for 1853. I would say was enlightened for 1953. The novel was absolutely delightful, playful, stirring, deeply affecting, full of music and drama. I loved it. You must read it. 
check out my review below. Thanks for watching. Tanya from The Sampler Girl here. So a book that is a new favorite of mine from the Victorian era is Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Hardy's writing is just so beautiful and it's not slow, it's not fast, it just has a rhythm, a flow to it that once you get into it, you're just lulled by it. Um, and it's very pictorial and descriptive without being boring. Um, the character Bathsheba is a strong, independent woman, and I really like that about her. And um, she has two men that she fancies, Gabriel Oakes and Sergeant Troy, and both vie for her attention and her affection. And she just has a wonderful way, a timeless way, of dealing with them and sorting them out and her own feelings. And she's a really strong character, just at the core. She is just amazing. And um, yeah, so I highly recommend Far From the Madding Crowd. Hello, I'm Terry of Terry Talks Books or Ms. Terry B on YouTube. I am here to tell you about a book that surprised me as a favorite Victorian novel. I did not like this book the first time I read it. It took repeated readings. It is a very gray book. It is utterly tragic and dare I say pessimistic. And that book is Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. What, what took me by surprise and made it a favorite of mine is the haunting beauty of the book. Uh, there is a living landscape that is very representative of uh, Tessa's experiences and the uh, landscape intensifies uh, these experiences and functions pretty much as a mirror. So even though it is terribly tragic and depressing, <laughs> I still find it to be, um, it, it's just the beauty, that, that haunting beauty that draws me to it. So I will leave it at that. Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. Hello everybody, my name is Tom from the channel Tom Reads Things. I hope you're all very well. Uh, so the book that I would like to talk about for this Victober is the remarkable, the wonderful, the brilliant, the moving, the fantastic David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. So I came to this book thinking, oh, this is gonna be a bit of a slog. Um, it's very long, it's almost a thousand pages um, and as Charles, Dick as we all know, Charles Dickens' writing can be quite intricate, shall we say? So I was thinking, I really want to read this, but it's going to be quite tricky. It's going to be, it's going to be a hard one to get through. I could not have been more wrong. This is an exceptional book. It follows the story of a young David Copperfield throughout his life and all of the different people that he meets and the journeys that he goes on. It is such a wonderful book. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's incredibly moving. There is a particular scene where David is with um, his, his nanny and she is talking to him through the door after he has been sent to bed, scolded um, by his stepfather. And it's just an incredible, incredible book. Please do not be put off by the size of this novel. It is absolutely beautiful. So yes, if you are interested in picking this up this Victober, please do. It is well worth the read. So a very happy Victober to everybody. Thanks again to the host for hosting. And I hope you enjoy whatever it is you'll be reading. Hi, Kate, and hello, everyone. I suppose that a surprising Victorian classic for me is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I hadn't expected to enjoy this book as much as I had going into it. Indeed, I chose to read this book because I wanted to read some of the works by Elizabeth Gaskell because of her notoriety amongst the people on YouTube, but also amongst the people, the writers that I know in the north of England who look upon her work as some of the great classics. So I chose a short one and I did not expect the humour that is within this story. Cranford follows the lives of these women in a small town and you were told from the off that it has become a matriarchal community. The men have left for whatever reason and it's just this brilliantly parochial pastoral story that exudes humour and just 
has some of the finest, wittiest writing that has heart at its core. And it's one of those that I've gone on to recommend to everyone. It's one of the reasons that I've downloaded so many audiobooks of Gaskell's to listen to. It surprised me and I thought it utterly brilliant. Hello, my name is Amy and my Instagram account is The Bookish Cookier. And a Victorian era novel that surprised me is Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens. Now, I read this a couple years ago and I went in without knowing anything about it. I don't think I even realized that Charles Dickens had a book called Dombey and Son until I started reading it. And um, there's always an element of surprise when you go into a book without any prior knowledge of the plot or how it was received. And so I just went in blind and I was at first a little surprised that it was slow for me considering how much I love Charles Dickens. And then I hit a certain point and I fell hard for it. And I was surprised by how much I loved it considering the slower start. And I just grew to really, really love those characters and the story. There's great villains. There's the sweetest romance. There's hilarious side characters. And it made me cry at the end, which is always a sign of a good book for me. <laughs> so I love Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens. Hi, I'm Jennifer from the channel Jennifer Brooks. Thanks, Kate, for putting this together. When I first thought of a surprising Victorian classic, my knee-jerk reaction was The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Not only is this book surprising in that it is intense, suspenseful, and it has tons of driving plot elements, but it completely took me by surprise by how quickly it captured me and my attention. I stayed up at night until midnight, one o'clock in the morning, trying to finish this. I could not believe how much it gripped me and how hard it was to put it down. This became quite unintentionally my favorite book from my experience of October last year, and it quickly became my favorite classic that I read in the entirety of 2018. Right now, it sits as my favorite Victorian classic of all time. I didn't see it coming, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Surprising not only in how the story is laid out and how it's formatted, but in terms of how much I loved it, how much I adore the characters, the protagonists and antagonists, these are some of the greatest villains I've ever read. Uh, so it seemed perfect to me to recommend The Woman in White as a surprising Victorian classic. The Victorian novel that surprised me most was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Even though this isn't my favorite Victorian novel, when I read it, I was taken aback by how much was accomplished in such a short book. A few things surprised me. What this has done to literary discussion, the fact that some people can look at this and see tensions between England and Scotland, or see it as a precursor for things that had no name, such as split personality disorder or bipolar disorder, or to be the inspiration of Jungian shadow self. I also really enjoyed the narrator who was sort of an investigative voice to this and the atmosphere set up. Like everything about this is foggy and mysterious and it has all of these airs of Jack the Ripper and just like, you get chills reading it. And another fun fact, not a lot of people know this, The Incredible Hulk was based on a combination of Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There's another one for you. Hi guys, it's Katie from Katie's Book Nook, and I would say that a Victorian novel that surprised me would be Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Um, I had tried to read Tessa the D'Urbervilles previously, and I just like, couldn't get into it when I was reading it at the time. So last year with Victober, I um, signed up to do a buddy read for um, Thomas Hardy. So I was like, what am I getting myself into? The first couple chapters were like so slow going. I couldn't get into the story. I didn't care. I didn't necessarily like the writing style, but I slogged through the first two chapters um, at the time I slogged through. And then I got swept up in the story. I think Thomas Hardy does a great job at writing those characters. Um, you get invested in the relationship. You get invested in the fact that things have a cause and an 
and an effect um, and I just thought it was extremely well done and I definitely plan on revisiting it soon so if you are looking for a book uh, I think a good introduction to Thomas Hardy I would highly highly suggest um, Far From the Madding Crowd so hope you enjoy Hi everyone, my name is Natalie and I am from the channel Curious Reader. A Victorian novel that surprised me by how much I loved it was North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. It is a close character study of two different characters experiencing the Industrial Revolution in England. Both characters are really strong and vivid and um, have a lot of different sides to them. I love that both characters learn from the other person's perspective. A central part of this book that I loved is the social commentary that Gaskell does through these characters and their discussions. So we have a lot of discussion around the idea of the town and how it is supposed to look, worker rights and human rights, discussions on nature, on religion. It is intelligent, it is thought-provoking, and it is a really good story with characters that you will want to stick with. A Victorian novel that surprised me was Middlemarch by George Eliot, and what was so surprising and really wonderful about it was discovering that this very famous and highly esteemed novel tells the stories of very ordinary and obscure people living in a very ordinary and obscure town. It's regarded as this triumph of English literature, and yet, kind of paradoxically, it's this book about disappointment and failure and deferred dreams, which I really wasn't expecting when I first read it. George Eliot writes with such a perceptive understanding of ambition and humility and human happiness, and I was shocked at how so many of her 19th century insights resonated so deep within my 21st century millennial soul. Middlemarch is incredibly, surprisingly, hashtag relatable and everyone should go read it right now. Hi guys, it's Erin from With the Classics. When my professor assigned me during the first semester of graduate school, Charles Dickens's Our Mutual Friend, I was very skeptical. First because I had had a kind of not very positive experience with Charles Dickens when we were assigned Great Expectations in high school, and secondly because it's really, really long. I actually started reading the book early just because I was like, I need to get this finished because it's such a chunker and then I started reading it early just because I wanted to because just a chapter or two in I was so enthralled I fell in love with all of the characters I was really intrigued by the element of mystery that this book has and as I kept reading I found that it had a lot of kind of almost fairy tale qualities not in the sense of it being set in any kind of fairy tale setting it's still just Dickens's contemporary London, but there are things about the plot and the characters that just give it this little touch of magic that I think is really, really beautiful and enjoyable. So the book kind of won me over and it's kind of a combination of those very intangible things that made this book one of the biggest surprises for me really in my general reading experience and definitely in terms of reading Victorian fiction. A fun Victorian novel I read last year was The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. Now his book The Woman in White has one of the most amazing villains ever written in literature in my opinion, but I really enjoyed The Moonstone even more. The Moonstone is touted as the first mystery novel, so if you like mysteries, this is a great one to read. Um, it has the funniest character, Mr. Betteridge, who just makes all the Robinson Crusoe references, so of course it's Victorian and it has multiple narrators. So um, you never know who to believe. You don't know who's reliable and who's not. One narrator will tell you, don't believe this, This I'm about to pass this off to the next narrator, but don't believe a word he says. So you're kind of always second guessing yourself and wondering you know, who's reliable, who's not. Um, it, it was just really fun to, to, to see the mystery unravel. And if you enjoy mysteries, I highly recommend you read this one. Hi friends, it's me, Andrea from Miss Havisham's Clock, and the book that surprised me the most this year, and it's actually a huge favorite of mine now, is Dumby and Son by Charles Dickens. I came to this book thinking it was going to be a male-centered narrative, very similar to the past ones I've read by Dickens, 
and was shocked and blown away by how great this book is. The plot is amazing, the characters are amazing, the ladies are amazing, and when they take over the show, it comes really, it's a great book to read. It is fun, it has dark elements, it has a lot of heavy and intense emotional moments, and the writing is just so beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful by Dickens I've encountered in his novels. It really is so powerful, it will move you, and it's just, it will create this setting that is just amazing it really you have to read it it hasn't been read a lot and i think that needs to change so i hope you take a chance on it thank you hi my name is jess from ed dickens and docs on instagram and you would think from my name that i would have chosen a dickens novel because i love those so much but i've never been surprised by how much i enjoyed them so i actually chose something different and i apologize kate that it's not just one book it's a whole series the palliser novels by anthony trollope and the covers are hideous, so I had really low expectations for these. But here's why I ended up absolutely loving them. They're written kind of like a TV series. Trollope could have been a screenwriter, I think. He's just so good at setting up a story. You never know who's bad or good at the beginning, and I can never predict what's going to happen. The plots are very convoluted. Um, the characters evolve, it's fascinating. You have your typical house calls and your parties and that sort of thing, but you also have fox hunting duels and stolen jewels, fraud and even murder. Um, he is a bit of a repetitive and thorough writer, but and he talks a lot about politics, which does not sell it, I'm sorry, but they are so worth your time. They're a fascinating look at and very realistic portrayal of life in the Victorian era, so give him a shot. Hi, it's Angie from Literary Labors. Last year was my first year participating in Victober, and I did join with some trepidation. Classic literature in general intimidates me. My fear is always that one, I'm not going to understand what I'm reading, or two, that I'll end up disliking a beloved classic. Um, but I knew I wanted to participate in Victober, so I joined despite my fears, and I ended up reading The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, and this was pleasantly surprising on several counts. I really enjoyed the writing style, and I was surprised by how accessible it was. I loved the characters. The characters were so vividly written that they just jumped off the page. And Marion Halcombe is one of my favorite female uh, heroines from literature. She's intelligent and steadfast. The other character that I really enjoyed reading about was Count Fosco. So despite his many flaws, and he had a lot of them, I really respected that he recognized Marion's worth. And then the final thing, that I found surprising was how compelling the story itself was. From the very first moment that I started reading, I was hooked. This is part mystery, part thriller, part legal fiction, and it was wonderful. Hi, I'm Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read, and I'm just gonna tell you about one of my favorite Victorian classics, which I discovered through rereading. Um, I read Charles Dickens' Great Expectations when I was about 18 or 19, and I did not like it. I was bored by it. I found Pip so annoying. Um, I didn't really get Miss Havisham. It's sad how much I didn't like the book. Um, and I probably would never have picked it up again, but in university it was on one of the reading lists, so I kind of had to, and it was a completely different world. I, I think it goes to show that sometimes it's not the book's fault, it's you. Um, so I discovered that it was about a tale about loss, about letting go, about ambition, about duty, about familial love. It was, it's just amazing. And I think the reason why I wanted to mention this one, because I have a few Victorian favourites, is because the prompt in, one of the prompts in this year's of October is to reread the classics. I would thoroughly recommend choosing a book that's not necessarily one of your favourites, because you might just find that you have a new favourite. Okay, there we go. I hope you have a lovely Victober. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Jenny from Bookish Shenanigans and the book that I want to talk to you about is Silas Barnum by George Eliot. This book was very influential for me, it was the one that made me decide that I wanted to go and study Victorian literature over Shakespeare and here I am doing a Victorian PhD, all because of this book. So in a nutshell, this is about Silas Marner, a miserly weaver who lives in a pastoral town set a few decades before the Victorian period and he is obsessed with recounting his pile of gold and adding to his wealth. 
until on a night between Christmas and New Year's Eve, he returns home to find his gold gone and a golden haired child on his hearth. And it's about his reaction to that, the town's reaction to that, how he becomes part of the community. It's also about the pain of childlessness for some of the female characters and about social standing, the idea that Silas Marner can take on this child but maybe not other members of the community that have a higher social standing can do that. So it's a great commentary on expectations socially. And I just think it's quite fairy tale esque in the details, like the child appearing on his heart. And another thing that I think makes it stand out is that it's not so much about romantic love. It focuses more on familial or, or adopted familial love and fatherly daughter love. And that relationship is really at the centre of this novel, which is quite different. And that is one of the things that made me really love it even more. And it's also an exploration between morality and religion, because obviously George Eliot had a mixed history with religion. And even though this is set just before the Victorian period, it really looks at the change from local handmade goods to factories and large-scale industries and the devaluation of human labour and the human cost of that, which is just such a wonderful example of depicting change in this period. This is just such an endearing novel and I hope that you read it too and love it just as much as I did. Hey, it's Doris with Aldi Books. A Victober read, a Victorian novel that I did not think I would like but ended up loving. I read a couple serialized Victorian novels back in the day and did not get along with them and thought that that wasn't my style. I actually thought I'd read this one. I only bought it because it has bees on the cover. I decided to reread it. Turns out I've never read it before. I ended up annotating this book, guys. I loved it that much. It's a top all-time read, not just for Victorian literature. Oh, this is so good. Oh, so good. I'm glad that the bees brought me back to it. So Bathsheba and her lover's square. These men, Farmer Boldwood and Sergeant Troy and devoted Gabriel Oak. What a man. The sweeping movie-like cinematography in this novel. And then the, the brilliant characterizations and looking into character traits and love and what that means, the different kinds of love and oh my goodness this is deep stuff and just glorious if you haven't already read it highly recommend highly recommend and happy victober so a victorian book that i went into thinking i was not going to like it at all is the warden by anthony trollope but i ended up completely loving it i went into this very skeptically because Everything that I'd heard made me think I wasn't going to like it. People said the church politics were really boring and that it was a very slow read. And only after about 30 or 40 pages, I was completely hooked. His writing is so beautiful and his allusions to literature and mythology and history are just completely fantastic. His characters are wonderful. The setting, it's just an amazing start to a really fantastic series. So if you haven't read it, I very, very highly recommend Hi there. My name is Emilio. I am the instant reader on Bookstagram and am going to tell you about a Victorian novel that has changed the way that I look at literature as well as my taste in Victorian literature moving forward. That novel is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights is amazing. I read it in the month of September and finished it maybe a week and a half ago. It left me shook. It left me not knowing what it is that I had just experienced. Contextually, I am wanting to annotate the hell out of it and being able to see exactly what at its core was Emily Bronte trying to say. There is this notion that it was a love story. However, if that is a love story, I'd love to know what Emily thought of real love, of romantic love. And I think she's telling us in this idea that it's not what you expect. And 
being able to live on life's rules with what it is that you can do.